This video is going to be a focus on the contribution of Ifeatu Melifonwu and Brian Branch, who both made tremendous plays throughout the Lions' 31-23 win over the Bucks in Sunday's NFC Divisional Round home win. Uh, they produced nine tackles each. Now, I will digress and talk about Derek Barnes at the end of this video because I feel like you have to. Maybe, perhaps it should be a standalone uh, product. But look, Melifonwu had another one and a half sacks to add to two quarterback hits and one tackle for loss. Branch also had a sack and a tackle for loss to go with his brilliant coverage and his ability to respond and be the seventh player in the box against the run. That's a simplistic way of describing it. Essentially, from his nickel position, lined up inside leverage of two, he's able to read, run, and come downhill and insert into gaps that he, quote, shouldn't be in. Those are the two safeties I want to focus on here. But we, we have to mention and cover that game ceiling interception by Barnes, and then also the first quarter interception by C.J. Gardner-Johnson that he snagged after initially lining up near the line of scrimmage. I wasn't really sure what to compare these safeties to. Uh, throw C.J. Gardner-Johnson in the mix as well. Perhaps I do too many videos at this point, so I'm running out of title ideas. Some of you might be too young to get the title, and if you are, that's okay. But if you're from Detroit or Michigan, um, and you don't know who Thomas Hearns is, then um, I don't know what to tell you. So look, Branch and Melifonwu, uh, they've been consistent factors in this run of six straight games where the Lions defense holds opposing teams to 24 points or less. And that includes the 20-19 loss to the Cowboys in Week 17. Um, anyway, here we are. After that loss to the Cowboys, which everyone thought ruined the, the Lions' chance for two home games in the playoffs, let alone perhaps three. And here we are, they're traveling to the 49ers for the NFC title game with a talented, versatile, and tough group of safeties, four of them, add Kirby Joseph to the mix, that I think in some ways compensates or makes up for the talent disparity that they have at, at corner versus some of the teams they're going against. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way towards Cam Sutton or Kendo Vildor, but they're, they're just not among the most talented outside corners in the league that are still uh, playing this weekend. Hopefully I said that in a way that makes sense and in a way that doesn't trigger you. Um, look, Aaron, groups, Aaron Glenn's group can be extremely multiple and aggressive because of Brian Branch, Melifonwu, uh, C.J. Gardner-Johnson as well. They can blitz up the middle in that delayed two-man blitz that I'll show you, I think, two examples of here, off the edge. They actually combined those two blitzes uh, late in the game. And in the case of Branch, look, just tight coverage no matter who he was lined up against. I'll start the film talking about Melifonwu, to be honest with you, because he's got four and a half sacks this year. If, if you include his playoff stats to the three sacks he had in the regular season, he was also very timely and clutch with that challenge on the two-point conversion pass to Mike Evans in the fourth quarter as the Bucks chose to try to get within six points. Again, at the end, I'll cover Barnes' game ceiling interception, since that was, at least from the replies that I have read in the comments section, you know, one of the most amazing interceptions, if not the most amazing interceptions in recent memory for the Lions. Just great timing and focus while hedging inside on a throw from Baker Mayfield, who still threw for 349 yards passing, but did have two interceptions. So let's get to the film. And we're going to start this on the first possession. Melifonwu's sack against base personnel for the Bucks. It's a second and nine first possession. 12 personnel, three to the boundary, which was a consistent theme for the Bucks, meaning putting the running back into the boundary along with the two tight ends. By the way, the Ravens did a lot of this this past week against the Texans as well. And you can see Melifonwu clean blitz off the edge. I'll give you the end zone angle of this one as well. Ends up being a loss of eight. One more time from the All-22. So you, you don't have Branch on the field because you've got Barnes, Anzalone as the OLBs, three interior linemen, two inside linebackers. So base 3-4 personnel for Detroit. And as Melifonwu blitzes here off the edge, you've got to replace him with someone. In this case, Jack Campbell is funneling two in, and the corner is funneling one in. So they're trying to create this funnel or tunnel, if you will, with the two receivers funneling them to the safety. The problem is you've got a later developing underneath route here that Alex Angeloni's got to do one of two things to. He's either got to release it to someone to the field, which is what he does, and ends up wide open, or run with it. I suggest to you that you've got man over to this side, and the Anzalone can't release that guy like he just did. But nonetheless, the, 
the blitzer, in this case, Malafon Wu, is there, and Baker Mayfield, Mayfield doesn't have time to get rid of the ball anyway. Creates the third and 17 that leads to C.J. Gardner's interception. We'll show you this one more time from the end zone angle. So since Malafon was blitzing off the edge out here, pay attention to Aiden Hutchinson's stunt or his path. He's going to the inside shoulder of the tackle, but initially he engaged him in the middle. He didn't make it so obvious that he was going inside such that a different protection scheme would allow that right tackle to pass him off to someone else. In this case, there was no one to pass it off to, but my point is Hutchinson did it correctly. He engaged the middle half of the body first so that the right tackle would stay engaged with him and then went inside, clearing the path for Malafonwu. This is the very next play. That's C.J. Gardner-Johnson lined up at the line of scrimmage on this third and 17. Again, first possession. And the pass is going to get tipped. They're dropping eight in coverage. I mean, the, the announcers went through a lot to try to talk about Evans not catching the ball particularly early. Even if he does catch the ball, he's not going to get the first down. But the Lions were able to have great field position um, after the play because of the tipped interception. So you can see Evans is working onto this spot right here, this opening. And I think that's Melifon Wu trying to drive on it. Additionally, Baker Mayfield's already throwing the football as Evans is clearing uh, Derek Barnes in his hands, up in the air, CJ with the interception. I think his second interception since coming back this year. And then, of course, he hands the ball to Baker Mayfield at the end of the play. <laughs> I didn't see that during the broadcast, but everybody's talked about it. It's kind of the attitude that he brings. Personally, I love it. Give me, give me 20 or 25 of him if I'm coaching a football team again. All right, second possession here. The Bucs are going to go down and get a field goal. A couple of big completions here. This is a third and two, and they're going to go quads. That's Melifon Wu matched up against Evans, and then Branch, I believe, is lined up against Godwin. My apologies, it's not Godwin. And Melifon Wu does a great job, I think, trying to challenge this. Evans is just a huge target. Baker Mayfield puts it in a great spot. Again, it's man from quads because you can see there's four receivers down here, number one. Number two, since the tight end initially blocked, the corner's not getting any depth. He's, A, waiting for the delayed release, which he gets. So it basically clears all of this space for Baker Mayfield to throw the ball onto. Really tough cover, if you ask me, all the, all the way across the field by Melifon. I think he did about as good a job as you can do covering a huge receiver like Mike Evans. So, First and 10 now after that completion for 18 yards. And this is going to be um, – I think that – I think Cam Sutton needs to play this a little better, but I don't know that you're going to stop this play regardless of what you do. Branch is on the stunt. Kirby Joseph is going to spin down. To me, uh, Sutton needs to be rolling back. You're basically, you know, playing hide the, the shell game with the Bucks On this hitch – Sutton kind of stays and comes forward just slightly before veering back. Now, I'm not sure that he's going to cover Trey Palmer here anyway on this route that's hedging in towards the hash. But you can see Sutton communicating. I think he knows that it's probably a hitch or he knows it's a possibility because of the way the receivers are lined up. But I don't think that's his job. With Kirby Joseph coming down, it's either Kirby Joseph has blown this or Sutton, one or the other. And it's entirely possible that it was Kirby Joseph, to be honest with you. But in any case, someone was supposed to help out um, there in the seam between the top of the numbers and the hash. So now since two big pass plays, and notice that the Bucks are in 12 personnel, two tight ends, and the Lions have responded with their nickel. Branch is now on the field after two big pass plays. Why? Because they're bringing him on a blitz off the edge, clean because the running back fell down and or – wasn't super interested in blocking Branch anyway. I don't think that Rashard White, who is a is super talented running back, especially catching the ball, is going to be able to prevent Brian Branch from getting there. He might impede him or delay his arrival. Ends up going down as a uh, nine-yard sack. End zone angle one time of this one and holds the Bucks to a field goal. So great call, number one. Number two kind of gives you a little bit of insight, I think, onto um, what Aaron Glenn, Dan Campbell, and the defensive staff are thinking in times of stress. They gave up an 18-yard completion to Evans on third down. They gave up 23 yards to Palmer and then immediately come back with the nickel blitz. Additionally, you do have a tight end over here, but pay attention to the alignment of Pascal. Now, he engages the tackle because the tight end releases, but it's basically freeing up 
the nickel defender branch to go one-on-one with the running back who falls down, doesn't do anything in pass pro, and you've got your first sack of the game. Like I said, field goal by the Bucks on their second possession. Gets them on the board. And then I think the third possession to go down and score, but I do want to show this one play to illustrate what I was talking about earlier, about three into the boundary. So the running back set into the boundary along with the tight end and two receivers. One of the receivers, I think Palmer, is going to motion across. Notice where Branch is, the nickel. He's to the trip side or tray side, really. It's tight end trips. He's to that side, but he doesn't go with Palmer. They widen up the will linebacker. In this case, it's Anzalone. He's lined up away from the tight end, so he's the weak side inside linebacker. And then basically a shield release, if you ask me, by these two receivers frees up the running back into the flats. It was a consistent theme. I thought that they were setting the running back into the boundary, releasing him over there, looking for either A, quick hitters to the running back, like this one for four yards. I mean, Branch still does a nice job navigating the pick or screen concepts. Or they were looking for complementary routes built off of that one, which I thought they got a couple of times. Like I said, I think the Bucks went down and scored a touchdown there. On their third possession, this is fourth possession. And Branch separated from the formation because you got twins down here, two receivers. There's the number two, and there's the number one. It's 11 personnel pro twins. And you got the running back set to the boundary, like I was talking about twice already. Only this time it happens to be a run play. Look how far away Branch is after motion it over. And I love this inside alignment. This is very similar to what he played at Alabama. In some cases, maybe his feet will be a little closer to, to a direct line. It's not a straight line, forgive me. His, his feet will be a little bit closer to the number two. This is a second and 10, so I find it interesting how far inside he is. He's really apexed, meaning you got the right tackle's outside foot and the, the receiver's closest foot forming a triangle that branches at the top of in the middle, creating two right angles. Forgive me for my drawing, but creating a right angle here and a right angle here from his alignment. Basically, he is equidistant to the right tackle and the slot receiver. Nonetheless, he's able to insert inside the B-gap and hold Rashad White to a three-yard gain. End zone angle, same play. You won't even see Branch um, off screen for a moment. And then he'll come back into the screen after the ball is snapped. Look at the huge gap that's here. He's basically taking over a gap that's not his. Rashad White doesn't cut back there because I think he's got some awareness that by the way, Melifon was involved in the tackle as well. I think these guys understand that Branch is going to fill heavy. All right, so third and five. This is going to be an incomplete pass to Godwin against Kendall Vildor. You got Melifon Wu and Branch both playing man. It's Melifon Wu in motion, going to play man on the tight end. Branch is being pulled out of here by this route. And then the second route to Godwin ends up being incomplete. So they're not really targeting Branch and Melifonwu in the pass game at this point. Again, this is fourth possession. So the Bucks added a field goal, I believe, to make it uh, to get within 10 to 10. Or excuse me, the Bucks missed a field goal later in this quarter. Second quarter, we go into the half, tied at 10. Now we got third quarter. And this is going to be uh, Melifonwu from the boundary on the tackle here. Notice Branch is over here as the outside corner. Now, that was because of the motion that brought Kendall Vildor over. So basically, the Lions are showing the Bucks their hand in terms of, hey, this is man coverage. If you want to change the play and go ahead and attack us in man, you may do so. Baker Mayfield stayed with the run play, and Melifonwu fills down, down, downhill. After the motion, again, this is the fourth time I've mentioned this. Look at what you have. You have tight end, a receiver, and the running back into the boundary. You got three to the boundary. The Bucks were heavily focused on this, if you ask me. I wonder what exactly they were trying to do. There was enough times where Hutchinson and Branch were lined up to the field to make me wonder if they were trying to avoid those two guys simplistically and attack other players. Hopefully I said that in a way that makes sense. Short gain, Melifonwu and Pascal are involved, I think it's a four- or five-yard game. Two plays later, this is third quarter, first possession again for the um, 
for the Bucks, and you've got a third and four. Hutchinson, clean rush off the edge. Notice Derek Barnes getting in the window. Him and Jack Campbell are dropping out. So they're basically forcing the Bucks to respect their ability to rush the passer, even if those guys aren't incredible pass rushers. They're, they have to be accounted for, and then they're both going to drop out. Creates this kind of domino or trickle-down trickle down effect. Only a four-man rush. Hutchinson is clean, and look at where Baker Mayfield was looking to this side. Barnes is definitely in the window. I didn't give you the all-22. Helps Hutchinson get the sack, loss of nine yards, and get another stop. Lions would take a 17-10 lead on their next possession. We're moving forward here in the third quarter. First and 10 from the negative 40, and you can see Branch and Barnes as well on the blitz. Ball on the right hash. Here's Branch again lined up inside of two. Let me draw that triangle again. I think he's a little further away from the tackle than he is to the number two receiver. I think his feet are a little bit further towards the bottom side of our screen, towards the receiver, than they are to the tackle. So he's not equidistant like at the top of that triangle that I drew earlier. Nonetheless, he's on a blitz from that wider alignment. Pascal has forced the left tackle to engage him because he's in a four-eye. I'll show you the alignment from the end zone angle, and Barnes finishes him off. I thought Barnes, even though he only had four or five tackles, played extremely well as also. So look at Pascal lined up inside, four-eye. You got a zero nose and a four-eye here. So that blitz from Branch isn't just well-timed. It's also well-coordinated with how the D-tackle was lined up. And Barnes is gone once he sees a mesh between the quarterback and the running back, fills the open window, helps out Branch with the tackle. Huge moment, if you ask me, because they got to stop. Fourth quarter now, the Lions have added another touchdown. This is 31 – game game flow, this is 31-17. Unfortunately for Detroit, I think this is about six and a half minutes left in the game, uh, the, the Bucks go down and score here, and I will show you the two-point conversion pass. So this is a dual blitz from Melifonwu and Reeves-Maben. I actually think Reeves-Maben has played really well recently also, in a small sample size, of course, number one. And number two, he's playing on passing downs. I think he's kind of built for that. Great motor. So you got Reeves-Maben and Melifonwu next to each other. A couple things. you got trips to the field. Here's Branch, and you've got one receiver down to the boundary. It's kind of a dead giveaway that this is a blitz because Melifonwu is on the wrong – he's not guarding anyone. There's no one for him to line up off of. Hopefully I said that in a way that makes sense to you. He's away from the trips unless he's going to help out down to the bottom side of the screen by dropping out maybe in a curl flat to help out with this receiver. He does not. It's this kind of delayed – Staggered blitz where Reeves Maben and him essentially hit the same side in a staccato or one two timing. End zone angle maybe will give you a better view. Ends up being four from one side. Notice the four Lions players in that box. Now, this is one of three examples in this game where I think the Lions are, I don't want to say giving up Hutchinson, but they are using him. As Now, he still almost gets the sack. They're using him to draw attention and then bring the blitz from his side or from the opposite side. I think that Hutchinson is drawing a lot of attention from people, clearly. Finished the regular season with 11 and a half sacks. And Aaron Glenn, Dan Campbell, and those guys, I think, are adjusting and utilizing him in a way to draw off that gravity. Check out Reeves Maben putting his foot in the ground and then bringing this back inside to bring the right guard with him. What it also does is draws the running back, and then Melifon was clean his first effort, unable to finish it off, and then gets a half sack with Reeves Maben. Pretty cool moment, if you ask me. Unfortunately, the Bucks are able to go down and get a score on this touchdown from Baker Mayfield, 16 yards uh, to Mike Evans, kind of like a double post concept where they clear out the safety, Joseph, with the first post, and the second one goes into that open space. I'm not sure what those guys are communicating. Depending on what they communicated, you could say that you want to let this post go to the backside safety so you don't get pulled out of there. That's not exactly how we would play it. We would expect one to handle this. I feel like it's the easiest way to do it, but look where the ball is thrown. I mean, it's an incredible throw by Baker Mayfield, number one. Number two, it's thrown not not early, It's but it's thrown 
perfectly in terms of the timing of the route. Baker Mayfield's already getting rid of the football here, and Mike Evans hasn't even made his break. It's just a great throw by him to get it up high where only Mike Evans can get it. I'm not sure if Cam Sutton, even if he plays it better, tighter on the coverage, that he's going to be able to necessarily stop that route. So that one gets the Bucks to 31-23, and there's a lot to be said about this two-point conversion. First, you've got man up at the top by Melifon Wu on Evans. I'll let you watch that a couple of times. And then the awareness of one thing that the Lions are doing. It's a mesh fade. So you've got mesh as a route concept underneath. Mesh is typically characterized by someone running an underneath drag from one side and a mirrored route, one of them higher or lower than the other, another underneath drag from the opposite side. Watch what Pascal, even look at his helmet. I almost feel like he's looking at the tight end and then Hutchinson. They're both dropping out of here again, and they're jamming up one of the tight ends on the release. After they jam him up, watch Hutchinson settle. It's almost like he's looking to play this other underneath drag. Now, the Bucks have got what they wanted, no doubt. But this is an underthrown ball. This is severely underthrown. There's nothing about this for me that looks like pass interference. This just looks like a great challenge and a dude playing football on a ball that's severely underthrown by the quarterback. And I don't believe that offenses should be rewarded for really poor accuracy in these moments. If you want a pass interference call for my money, you've got to put it in a more catchable place for the receiver. This ball simply is not catchable with a defender underneath of him. And, and just by the way, I've experienced with these types of routes from a coaching perspective. Uh, we used to have things in the way such that the quarterback had to throw it over it to practice it, but we weren't constantly having corners and receivers uh, making contact with each other and potentially falling on top of each other. You could practice the route with something in the way. Sometimes it'd be a coach with like a broom or something like that to hold it up and give the receiver something he has to focus on. Even in those things, if the ball's severely underthrown, it's the quarterback's fault. I just don't see where that's anything less than great coverage by Melifon Wu. So moving forward here, this is fourth quarter, last two minutes. Like I said, the Bucks have pulled within 31-23. Lions offense unable to close the game or close down the show like they did against the Rams the week before. And here we go, two minutes left, up by eight, defense on the field. Branches up to the top side, and this is a short completion to uh, Mike Evans. Down into the boundary, Reeves Maben basically playing a cover two, if you ask me, inside on number two. And then this could possibly be a two-read situation where Sutton is looking for an out by Evans, who also appears to be looking over there and reading it, so he sits this down. So when you talk about routes sometimes, sometimes you're talking about a guy reading it in the middle of the play, and I think Mike Evans just did. Instead of pulling this route down to the sideline, he saw the corner sitting, squatting, waiting, whatever you want to call it, palms to read. And so he sat it down for a short gain, five yards. All right, so the play of the game for Derek Barnes. I think it shows, number one, what Aaron Glenn's going to go to in moments of high stress or high leverage for the defense. And number two, what Derek Barnes is capable of if you're lining him up at outside linebacker often enough. Now, this is to the boundary, which doesn't surprise me. You've got Jalen Rees-Maben pushing to the field, uh, Melifon Wu, for whatever reason, coming downhill and then getting depth again. But to the backside of this, Barnes is tracking the tight end intentionally to stay inside leverage of him. Watch what he does off the snap. I'll let this run a couple of times. He turns and runs with two. So he turns and runs with him for a moment to stay on his inside hip. If two had gone out, if the tight end had gone out immediately, he would have looked for one coming in. That's conceptually what you're going to teach people, number one, and number two, what you're going to react to in this drill that I've seen done uh, hundreds of times. Now, I haven't seen hundreds of these interceptions, though. It's great leverage by Barnes to be inside. You can imagine if he's outside of two there, two being the tight end, then it's going to be a far easier completion uh, for Baker Mayfield to get this off. From the end zone angle, you'll see the stunt. In these high leverage moments, I think this is what you're going to get out of Aaron Glenn. You're going to get some type of stunt. Kaminsky is bringing heat, 
And again, this is Aiden Hutchinson, not part of the rush at all. I think what they have done is they have got the Bucks to put the running back to Hutchinson side and then tried to bring the stunt away from him. And in terms of actually getting to the quarterback, it works because of Kaminsky's effort. And neither Anzalone nor Branch is able to get there because their left guard, first of all, takes Anzalone, and then the running back collisions Branch. But Kaminsky's effort, I thought Kaminsky played really well the other day. And this interception, for my money at least this year, is one of the best ones I've seen out of all the games that I've watched. And, of course, I've watched every Ravens game and every Lions game in the regular season and the preseason. Brilliant play from Derek Barnes. I think his first career interception. But you don't do something like that unless you've been drilled on it, unless you've made that catch hundreds of times in practice. And the pass drop that he took was exquisite. Inside leverage of two and then turning to look at the quarterback such that the ball isn't thrown over his head like a Tampa 2 type situation, which is not what that was. I think that's what you're going to get out of Aaron Glenn and Dan Campbell in the defense in some of these moments where they need a stop and it's an obvious passing situation. You're going to get that delayed blitz, staggered blitz, one-two with the staccato timing, and or you're going to get a nickel blitz off the edge and some type of rotation coverage. I think that that's a sound move. I would not suggest, though, bringing six and playing cover zero in those situations. I've spent significant time in the reaction video talking about that and criticizing it. Imagine that situation you just saw right there. If you're in cover zero, yeah, you might get to Baker Mayfield, but you may give up a big play as well. In this case, a smart tactical decision, I think, was made, and it's made possible because you have a versatile guy at outside linebacker slash the end and Derek Barnes there who can drop out and be in the right position in terms of leverage. Man, I appreciate you guys' time. If you enjoyed this look at, at how – Branch and Melifon Wu, and to a lesser extent, C.J. Gardner-Johnson and Derek Barnes, impacted the game on Sunday. Detroit's second playoff win in a week. I'm sure, as a Lions fan, you've got to be giddy, but uh, you're not playing with house money, in my opinion. In the end, I think for right now, in the NFC, everybody thinks that the, the 49ers are the house. I disagree. I think the Lions are, and I think you've got a great chance to go to San Francisco and get a win as long as you don't turn the football over, number one. Number two, protect golf and number three are able to make timely plays and blitz calls like these that are still somewhat safe on the back end. I would advocate for damn near eliminating the six-man blitz where you bring cover zero, but who knows, maybe next week in San Francisco, a big play will be made uh, from one of those concepts. Man, I appreciate you guys' time. If you think other Lions fans would enjoy this film study look at Detroit safeties really impacting their win over the Bucks, then please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media so other Lions fans can enjoy this video as well.